I'm Noah Drum. And I'm Zach Hall. And we are the Geeks That Speak. This is the podcast where we nerd out about pretty much any pop culture. From video games, Star Wars, and zombies. To music, movies, and comics. You just never know where the combo will go on Geek Geek Speak. Speak. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of Geek Speak. We're going to be talking about episode 5 of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Truth. That took me a minute. (laughs) I almost forgot what it was. Yes. Before we continue and have to go Spoilers. tell your mom. Just don't make us tell don't make us tell your mother. We will make sure she beats your ass. Indeed, indeed. But now that that's out of the way, we can actually we can actually start. So, um well, it kind of basically picks off Picks Immediately up after right, last week's episode, yep. yep. We see uh, John Walker run away into, like, some abandoned building, and then, like, we sort of see Lamar flashes in his head, yeah. and, like, John kind of blames himself for Lamar's death, because he, he even said, like, it, this took me a minute, I had to put subtitles on Disney Plus and rewatch it, but yeah. he actually said, uh, he didn't want me to go in, why didn't I listen? Yeah, really. I heard the why didn't I listen, but I couldn't tell what he said before that. But yes, he said yeah. he didn't want me to go in. I assume before him and Lamar went to the Flag Smashers. Yeah. You know, so yeah, he kind of blames himself for his buddy's death. Which he should be. But then you hear Lamar say, you consistently make the right decisions in the heat of battle after we've just seen oh, him okay. make two very bad decisions. Yeah, really. So maybe that'll actually weigh on him. And he'll try to be better. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, well, it doesn't. It doesn't look like. Did it. you? Uh, I know that we're kind of just like making a, you know, big area. Um, did you see the post credit scene? Yes, we'll get to that. Okay. Just now, sure. um, I I wanted to ask you this. So right before he gets up to go confront Falcon and Bucky, he says, "Uh, <clears throat> it's time to go to work." Because Lamar said that to him earlier, time to go to work in the locker room. So do you think time to go to work is going to be his I can do this all day type thing? Like his little mantra that he's going to say before he goes into every battle? Yeah, that's I could see that being the case. All right, time to go to work. But anyway, okay. Then we get one of the best fights, I think, so far. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Like, right at the beginning, you see Bucky. I like how he disarmed him and, like, got John's gun out of the way. Yeah. Because it's already been proven John will use it. Yeah, really. He he was about to use that shit, too. Um, I kind of liked his face, too. I don't know why, but he looked funny when he was... John, when he was, like, through the shield at Bucky, and then he was just like, Why are you making me do this? Like, I don't know. Wyatt Russell's facial expression was, like, so just... Like, I don't know. It was good. I liked it. My favorite part during that whole fight scene is when they pretty much, like, drop kick uh, John Walker into the shield. Yeah. No, Bucky, like, used him as a bat. And I think this was Bucky taking out frustration on Falcon, honestly. He just used it as a bat like he was swinging it at Sam. And then Sam blocked it with the shield. (laughs) Either way, that shit was hilarious. Yes. I kind of thought Bucky's arm was broke when it got shocked for a minute. Yeah. But, I, like, I guess it's not? No. I mean, it is vibranium after after all, so. But I like the way how um when Falcon went to grapple the shield near the end of the fight, I like how John like, grabbed it and just, like, stood sideways on the forklift. Yeah. And, like, was pulling Falcon. Because I didn't, I didn't think... Uh, John was gonna drop the shield honestly when he was pulling because I know he we know he's super soldiered up. Yeah. So I thought he was just gonna sit there and I thought he was gonna do exactly what Cap did to Spider Man in Civil War when he tried to web the shield for the second time and Cap just like pulled him and fucking just ping right in the for- piece of him in the forehead with the shield. Like pulled he pulled him over yeah. and then clotheslined him with the shield pretty much. I yeah. thought John was gonna do that to Falcon, but he kind of just like dropped the shield and then you see that little scramble moment. Oh, yeah, literally, he drops his shield, and I'm like, go for it, Sam, go for it. No, what are you waiting for? Like, 
And then John, he ends up getting the shield back again. Yep. And uh, he tries to kill Falcon the same yeah, way he killed Nico. He tries to kill both Falcon and Bucky the mm-hmm. same way. But they, at the end of the day, they had each other's backs, and that was not going down the way that he right, thought it was. Right. It's kind of dope how he ripped Falcon's wings off, though. I kind of liked that, honestly. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't like it because I'm like, those are his wings, but like. I don't want to see a wingless Falcon, but it was just cool. Like, I am Captain America, and let me just get rid of your best weapon. <laughs> Yeah, that that's a that's a common line thrown in this episode. Mm-hmm. And I then, Captain America. and then no. in the next scene, who do we get? Someone we talked about last week. Joaquin Torres pops up again. Yeah, he hasn't appeared since episode two, and now he's back in episode five. So, and him and Sam talk. Um, you know, Cap's in trouble, and people are taking. O- Wait, what? I don't know what I was saying. Never mind. <laughs> I was reading my notes, but they look like they're unfinished or something. They might be unfinished. Um, I don't remember what they were saying all the Oh, duh. Wow, I'm stupid. I'm sorry. Um, They were talking, right? And right. Joaquin was basically telling him how Captain America, John Walker's now in trouble for killing the guy. And, like, now the government's going to take over their case. Yeah. And he's giving him the rundown. And um, then Torres, I find it weird why Sam didn't address it, but, like, Torres asked two different times what happened to the wings. And, oh, yeah. And he he's kind of been curious all the time. I mean, he even tried to, yeah. like... He even was going to, like... He was weird like that when we first saw him in episode two. Yeah. questioning Sam and stuff, like trying to help him with his drone. And I don't know. He's fishy sometimes. But um, at the end, he was like, well, what about the wings? Keep them. Keep them. Which clearly is probably going to mean that Joaquin is going to take over the mantle of Falcon. Yeah. I could see some shit going down where, jo- uh, where Joaquin is going <gasps> to fix the wings and then you know give you know give him a little cash run, and then he was like, Loki, I like these. Do you think we're gonna see him fly the wings next episode for the finale or no? I don't know, I but I'm hope but I'm hoping it's I don't know maybe like ten fifteen minutes longer. We've got so much going on. I don't see it happening, but I feel like this is gonna be a little Easter egg. Like maybe in the next movie that. Falcon's in like the next cat movie. Falcon's Honestly, gonna, or Joaquin's gonna show up as Falcon with the wings. That might be a post credit scene. There you go. Because they're not gonna do too much. Like I don't think they're no. officially gonna name him Falcon in the show because no. like they're just start. They're just now naming Sam Captain America, and we knew he was Captain America the whole time. So yeah, if they can't even do that for the main character, Joaquin ain't getting justice. And at that end of the fight uh, between them and John, Bucky threw the shield down like, hey, this is yours. Keep it. <laughs> right. Do it this time. Oh, yeah, literally in that whole line. Like, yeah, do it this time. Well, no, he didn't say that, but, like, that's basically what he said by dropping yeah. it down. Yeah, uh, I think he did say something. No, no, oh, he, he just didn't? looked at him. No, okay. And then uh, we jump to John talking with at that senator meeting. Yeah, he was uh, frustrated, but like, well, I mean, they basically tell him, yeah. Um, so you murdered someone in cold blood out in the street. You can't be cap anymore. Yeah, they they were gonna give him the benefits or whatever, cause I they uh, I think they like kicked him out of the army or whatever. Well, they gave him a less than honorable discharge. Yeah, and then he which means he gets out, no then... benefits. He holds no rank in retirement. He no longer gets any army oh, benefits, yeah. and he can't act as Captain America. And he's pissed because he thinks he's Cap. Yeah, no, no, you're not. But but no. I think it's kind of justified how mad he is because, like, let's be honest. If he killed Nico inside that building, this would not be happening. Yeah, because no one would have been able to like like because people wouldn't have seen it really. Like the government would not have cared. Even no. when John and Battlestar were talking before, and he was like, um, I think we both agree that the things we had to do to earn those medals were less than heroic. 
Yeah. Like, in the war. Like, he's used to killing stuff. So when he even said, like, well, when I live my when... life by your mandates, you made me. When you're in a straight-out war, not that's wrong. understandable, but they're not really in a war right now. Right, but that's why he shouldn't be capped, because that's how he thinks, with that war mentality. Like, Steve Rogers, he was in a war. Not Actually, not only did he serve World War II, but he served the Infinity War. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that's a war in itself. But, like, I don't... I don't know. Just... I that scene was kind of a double edged sword because I don't like John. I don't want him to be Cap, but also like I don't agree that he should have got all of his army benefits taken away. Honestly, honestly, that's where because we we know about U.S. agent in the comics. I I honestly thought they were gonna say like yeah you can no longer be Captain America, but you can now be. This other guy. Right, but I think he's just going to be this other guy anyway. Yeah. But um, then he obviously, like you said, he gets pissed, does his little head shake thing, and then just walks out as they're still talking to him. Yeah, like zero Fs given. Sidebar, though, like it's kind of interesting how he talks to his superiors. Like, w- at the beginning I mean, of that, he was so like professional and cordial and kind of sounded like he had a good vocabulary. And then he, he just started, like, yelling at him, but still, like, I, he never cussed I, at him. I, under, I understood it, though. Like, right. With the but... frustration, like, like uh, the dude said something about mandates or whatever, and then John was like, <coughs> I followed all of your mandates. Right. I mean, before that, when he was talking, like, when he was saying, well, well, I think that you guys don't know the full like given the circumstances of the thing i'd like to represent my case i don't know how exactly he said it but he was so like professional about it and just not how john walker normally talks no not at all and then john's wife tries to console him after that little meeting yeah and they get interrupted dun 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 do you remember by who some uh her I mean it's Elaine from Seinfeld. Yeah, it's Elaine from <laughs> Seinfeld, but like Valentina I can't I can't something. remember her name in real life. Oh wait, yeah, Julia Louise Dreyfus. Yeah. But um they get interrupted by a stranger who reveals herself to be Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. And she just kind of sits down and owns the conversation like she has known them for years. Yeah. <laughs> Tells John what's up. I, I find it funny, too, because her uh, his wife is like, who are you? She just ignores her for a <laughs> second. <laughs> Bitch, I don't know you. Oh, let me compliment you real quick. He did a good job marrying you. Bitch, I don't know you. Like, <laughs> Really? It was great, though. Yeah, um, it, was, it was hilarious. To be fully honest. Oh, she just, like, comes in, like... <laughs> She owned hey, the up? whole thing. Uh, and, and I know about you taking the serum. Yep. So, and you become very valuable to certain people. And she agrees to him killing the people. And she basically says, like, the only reason the government guys are also not on your side is because they have this whole thing to protect making a money sign. Like, basically saying they have. Yeah. <laughs> and, Cap um, has to look good for and, them and to sell the merch. Comics, her character is a shield agent and then she also becomes lady hydra uh okay. but she but that's her persona to betray hydra or whatever it said <laughs> okay so in the comics um she's she's not like lady hydra she well, she she takes the mantle of lady hydra yeah. for a time but like that's not who she is no, actually that's not She's not a double agent. She is a triple agent. Oh, uh, boy. So here that's we go. That's where it gets confusing. Here we go. Ready? So we think that she works for S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Yeah. And then while she's working for S.H.I.E.L.D., she infiltrates Hydra, becomes Madam Hydra for a little bit, right? But what we don't know is the whole time she's secretly been a sleeper agent for this agency called Leviathan, which is like a Russian agency. Yeah. And... Uh, Contessa Valentin, whatever her name is, she was supposed to appear or or debut in Black Widow. Oh wow! So that means she's more connected to that. So maybe so this is how the jump to Black mean... Widow. She's gonna be in Black okay. Widow, yes. 
but she was supposed to be in that first, but then, you know, it got jumped back, and now stuff has moved, so now she's appearing in this yeah. first. But, yeah, she's going to be in Black Widow, too. So, um, obviously, she's going to be a bigger character. Oh, yeah, definitely. But that definitely makes me think that she's a triple agent for Leviathan because Black Widow's in Russia. Yeah, at the time, yeah. So, but, yeah, she's a triple agent. She works for Leviathan. Then she goes to S.H.I.E.L.D. to try to be a, look like a good guy and then infiltrate Hydra as S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, it gets real confusing. But she's also, like, Nick Fury's love interest for a while. She was involved with the Secret Wars. Um, or the secret invasion. She was on this group. I think it was called the Fem Force, with uh, Sharon Carter. Okay. So maybe we'll see that they have some previous history. Maybe. Question. Do you think she's the power broker? I mean, I don't want to jump to the gun and say, "Oh my God." Newly introduced character. She's a power <laughs> broker. Right, right. I will jump to the gun, though. And you're not going to like it, but... Newly She's introduced character. She could be a scroll. She's a scroll. Hashtag everyone's a scroll. I'm just saying. she She'd be a good candidate for a scroll. She'd be a deep one. I mean, but anyway. <laughs> I mean, she definitely could be. Everyone's a scroll. But literally... Little do you know, everyone on Earth in the MCU are scrolls. But, no, I ask you if she's the power broker because how does she know that he took the serum? How does she know he doesn't have the shield? Like, uh, and also, she said she's very valuable to certain people. Well, she said he's valuable. Well, she, yeah. Yeah. I, I meant he. Uh, he's very valuable to people, um, and she... I'm pretty sure she was also referring to herself as well. I mean, she didn't say that. To her. But clearly, no, but why would she be contacting why, him if he's not? But yeah. that's why I think she could be the power broker because, like, the serum's gone, and, and we know so now well. he needs her blood, or she needs his blood. And not only that, the power if the power broker knows about John taking the serum, he's gonna be pissed because that's what the power broker wants is the serum, right? So that's why she's reaching out to him to get his blood to do the same thing over again and get more serum. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take a while, but, like, what other hope do you have? But then again, I don't know. You, you just never know, and, like, she is this established character in the comic. Well, you could say that she's just, like, another henchman for the power broker, like Sharon Carter might be, but she seems like a higher up. Than Sharon Carter. Yeah, so oh, way higher up. I feel like she could be the power broker. Or, I mean, she's probably not. We probably won't even know who the power broker is this series, just like we didn't get the big bad for WandaVision. Yeah. But, I don't know. She, if, at this point in time, if anybody that already is in the show is the power broker, I feel like it's her. Yeah. Because she knows things that no other people seem to know. Like, yeah, no. Literally, the only people that really know about John, like, taking the serum is definitely Bucky and Sam. Okay. And. But Joaquin knows that Sam has the shield. So could she be talking to Joaquin, and that's how she knows he doesn't have the shield? She's like, oh, well, Falcon gave me his wings, and he took the shield. Possibly, man. I mean, he's seemed shady a little bit from the start, too, but I just want him to be a good guy and take over the mantle of Falcon. Well, at the end of the day, I feel like any newly introduced characters are definitely shady. Eh, I don't know. Like, like, I don't know. It just had... Just, you know, Joaquin Torres, then... the uh, uh, Valentina, or Val, or whatever... Uh, she's def just the way that she talks is just shady. She's shady as fuck. Anyway, you know that she's like, just you can a hear bad it in her person. voice. Yeah, you just know. <coughs> but um, so then okay, well, you just stopped the conversation. You could have just kept talking, but like, no, we're just gonna keep it dead air on here. Hey. Like it's not. A podcast that's something they have to listen to. I don't want to be the one talking the whole time. 
No, I know. I got distracted. But, um, after, after Val meets up with John, uh, we, So um, we see the Flag Smashers at the same, er, yeah, 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 we see the Flag Smashers go back to the GRC place that Zemo gave the children candy at. Yeah, and that was now condemned and mm-hmm. evacuated. Well, because the GRC were, are looking for Carly and yeah. all of her, you know, correspondents. They couldn't find her, so they just took everyone at the camp, basically. So it's yeah. abandoned now. They go back and see that. And then um, she says, how many of us have to pay with blood just to be a citizen of this goddamn planet? And it's like, what? Yeah. I I just don't like the wording from her, like, at all, like, throughout any of her conversations, like, like, then she says the movement is ready, and the gov won't stop us unless they unless they won't stop unless we make them. She says. So that'll probably lead to the big fight. Like clearly, that'll be the big fight at the at season six is whatever the movement is. Yeah. But like, I'm kind of confused. Like I don't know what the flag smashers really want or are doing. Yeah. Um. They also like show. Like the gr- like a small group of them along with uh, Betrock in New York. Mm-hmm. Like, why are they in New York? Oh, okay. Well, that's easy. They're in New York because that's at the end of the episode. We see it come on the TV that they're about to vote on the Patch Act in New York. Yes, oh, and okay. the Flag Smashers don't want that to happen. So I think they're just about to go jack that meeting like some Zemo type stuff in Civil War and just cause problems at the meeting. That's why they're in New York. That's why Sam saw it and was like, all right, time to open the Wakandan lunchbox. (laughs) But, yeah, that's my thing. But, like, I don't – the Flag Smashers just seem weird to me. I don't know what they want. I know they want to be citizens and live here, but it's like, okay, so do it. Who is stopping you? I don't understand. Like, you definitely didn't need to commit crimes at all in any way, shape, or form. Like, if they got kicked out, I understand that. But, I don't know. It seems like we first saw them robbing a bank. Yeah. And, like, now it's super soldier stuff. It's just, it's weird. Like, like no matter what they do, like, in, like, the first or second episode, Carly mentions that, Oh, ever since the ever since the rest of the uh, people came back or whatever, oh, people don't care about us anymore. Right. <clears throat> but like, you weren't snapped. Like, right. You gotta understand <laughs> that. I don't know, but whatever. So then, after that weird, confusing scene, we finally get to see the trailer scene of Zemo standing in front of the Sokovian statue. The yeah, memorial. The memorial, yeah. Which, it's a little different than the trailer scene. Yeah, it's a little... There was this whole, like, coronavirus plot that was going to be... In yeah, the, in I saw, like, a new Falcon Rockstars thing, Soldier. but I don't... And then they cut that entirely. I don't actually know, so I didn't feel the need to report on it, because, like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just going based off what we actually have. But although... uh the changes that were pointed out with that scene was like there's like a bunch of like flowers and stuff that yeah you, that are no longer in the episode, uh, and I'm like that could have just been like more recent stuff. Yeah, you know, you didn't have to necessarily. Be, I don't know. Yeah, I don't but know. either way, that's what I mean. I don't go based on trailer footage. I watch yeah. the show and then that's yeah. what's canon, like what's there. And then Bucky meets him at the yeah. statue. Yeah, Bucky which... shows up. Uh, totally expected. Why, r- about ready to shoot Zemo. Speaking of Zemo, speaking of Zemo, we we have him. Yeah. Not that you can really see. There's a glare on the light, and it's you can't read it. But this is the Zemester right here. The Zemester. The Zemester. <laughs> Zemester. The Zemester. <laughs> Daddy Zem Zem. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Bucky ends up showing up. And uh, Zemo says that he decides to not to kill Bucky. Yeah. So, like, you had this plan to kill him all along, which we basically speculated that he did. Mm-hmm. But I've decided not to kill you. But is that also part of his plan to make him think he's safe? I don't I know. Don't... You never know. With you, Zemo. you really never know with Zemo. But, like, I wonder if he doesn't want to kill him because he knows that, like, Bucky isn't full of himself. 
doesn't have that super soldier complex like the others do? Yeah. Or is it because he's just trying to use him and manipulate him more? Is he lying? Maybe he was going to kill him, but he I don't, you know, saw Bucky with the gun, so he's like, oh, crap. I don't necessarily know, but all we do know is that uh, shortly after Bucky, like, points the gun at him, shoots him, you hear the gun click, nothing comes out, and then another part of the trailer footage is a slow-mo of bullets dropping out of his other hand. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, wow. I, I straight up thought he was about to shoot Zemo. <sighs> that was weird because, like, I kind of did too, but I was also like, there's no way. How are they about to kill Zemo right now? He could do so much more. But then after that. But he they're... taught Zemo a lesson. Yeah. Zemo, did you? he thought he was going to die, and he was kind of ready too. Yeah, he he was ready. I'm like, he you even was... saw him like jerk when when the the gun clicked. <laughs> Normally, he composes himself like when Bucky was in his face, but like this time, you saw him like. But uh, Wakandans end up showing up to yes. then escort Zemo to the raft, which we first saw in Civil War. Why would the Dora Milaje take him to the raft? Why not lock him up in Wakanda? Right, like wasn't. Isn't this all because you didn't lock him up in Wakanda in the first place, and now Bucky broke him out, and you're mad, but now you're going to take him to the raft instead of taking him to Wakanda? Be, like, like, all right. Like what? A Captain America broke his squad from the Civil War movie out of the raft, so, like, how is that not going to be tough for someone else to break Zemo out? Right. Like, Captain America, obviously, is a super soldier, but... But there's other people that could do it. Yeah, no, definitely. But I just... It's weird to me why they wouldn't put him in Wakanda where they could watch him. And everybody's saying, oh, this is for sure the Thunderbolts. First of all, I would like to say, um, we've been saying that ever since the Conrad Mack reference. Yeah. Like, Thunderbolts has been way before this. I don't see how this is... I, I guess Thunderbolts. I guess this gives it more well, like proof because that, that actually might runs happen. The raft. Yeah. So like, oh, we're gonna put him there where Ross can use him to assemble his Suicide Squad type team. Yeah. Because I mean, if John Walker survives this, he's probably gonna end up there. Maybe Carly if she survives this, because it's a place probably. for super powered people. So why would they not go there? Yeah, and Zemo's not super powered. He's just. Like, he, right, he happens but, to be rich. But clearly he's smart and capable enough to, yeah. like, the, his IQ they don't trust him in real prison. Uh, his IQ is definitely above average. And then Ao says that the White Wolf should stay out of Wakanda for a while. And then he just responds to that with, oh, hey, I need a favor. Yeah, after, after after being told, yeah, you're not welcome here for a while, I need a favor. Right. And they did it. Why did they do it? it? Are they mad at you or are they not mad at you? They're probably mad at him because, well, we know they're mad at him. We They're mad at him because they broke Zemo out, but I think the hostile vibes between each other went down because he... Like he said what he, he probably did what like he said. our government like they hate him on paper but they know he's not a complete asshole so it's yeah. like we'll help you out just be gone and because uh, he does return Zemo right right and then um she calls him the white wolf again yeah which and this is even showing that there's some weird tension with him in Wakanda right now so I'm just praying I saw someone say uh, season two of Falcon and Winter Soldier is not going to be season is not going to be season two, but it's just going to be uh, Captain America and White Wolf. Which I which I eh I don't know. People people want I'm sure people want a season two for this show. Like I, I want want a season like here's I wanted a season two for Wandavision. I don't I don't. How could you? You could. It'd be weird because if they did do a season two for these limited series, they would have like I think it's stupid to, watch... to make these a seasonal thing. Like make it one season, make it this event, 
No, no, and it, be done with it. It definitely would be stupid, but if they did do that, it would uh, be like the chronological. You know, it'd be Endgame, uh, WandaVision, season one, then uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Spider Man, Far From Home, and then like whatever the hell comes out. Yeah, whatever yeah, the but hell that's comes. Stupid, yeah, and though. then like oh, season two comes. Uh, that's oh yeah, like. But if he's gonna become Captain America, and then let's say Bucky does become White Wolf, and you call it Captain America and White Wolf, it's no longer Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, so really. So just call it Captain America and the White Wolf, and don't and, have season two anything. And besides, if we're gonna see White Wolf, it's definitely Black Panther too. And for Wanda Vision, like that's not even the same Vision anymore. No, not at all. And her kids aren't there. Like it's not you're, the same she's not gonna vision, enslave a town again. But the Vision that we see dip has all the memories well right but just because wanda's in something doesn't mean it's got to be wandavision 2 yeah no you know what like, i mean like we know what she's gonna why be wouldn't in she next, just call so. it something else yeah she's in doctor strange yeah, she's 2 being doctor strange but it's 2, called but doctor not. strange 2 yeah exactly so like i don't know don't do season twos of the disney plus no. shows just why i don't i don't see they they're, they're called limited series of the marvel ones anyway the marvel yeah. ones but we got a little off. Jumping back into it, Sam finally goes back and visits Isaiah Bradley. Yeah, I, like I called it from <sighs> the beginning. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be back. It's about I'm gonna be back. Time, man. And and I liked that whole meeting uh, because Sam was gonna straight up give Isaiah the shield. Yeah. And he and but He's Isaiah like, declined keep it. Keep it covered. Keep it covered. Like, what, what do you think? What do you think? What, uh, you really think America's gonna really want a black man be Captain America? Or right. Something, he was something like, like, I that. those stars and stripes don't or, mean or nothing least, to me. Or, or at least a respectable black man. And then, um, Falcon's like, yeah, why don't why don't those stars and stripes mean something to you? Like, I want to know what happened. Yeah. And, and then he sits down and tells him. That, that was very talks interesting. Talks about the racism he saw with the Tuskegee Airmen. Those that. I can't remember the number, but the pilot, the pilot, pilots he was talking about, those were a group of black fighter pilots that were in the war and, like, were actually pretty damn good. They got stuff done. They were pretty celebrated. But then he said, came home to crosses being burnt on their lawn. American heroes, just because they're black, racism. Yeah. And he talks about how he couldn't be Captain America because it's not that blonde hair, blue eyes image they want. Yeah, with, like with what they got with Steve. <laughs> right. And then we find out Isaiah had a wife who died while he was in jail. They locked all of her letters away in a box that he just never saw. They told her that he died. Yeah. And the only reason he's out now is because a nurse in jail felt bad for him, so she faked some paperwork and got him declared dead. And that's why... Oh, and then she gave him the letters that he could read because he didn't even know she sent him letters while he was in there. And the funny thing is, did he not even open the letters? No, I think he did. I just think he was careful with them after yeah. knowing what happened. But yeah, he read those. How do you not? But you're right. They do look nice in the box because he was probably like... I'm surprised he gave them to Sam like that, honestly. Yeah. That shows like, you the trust he had. You know, from one black man to another, you know? But, like, uh, you know, not just an, just some random black man, you know? Right, it, right. It like, shows you that like, there's a connection there. Like, they yeah. trust each other more. And not only that, like, this, like, talking about, like, oh, Captain, like, the role of Captain America. Mm -hmm. and, and he was explaining why he just... It, it would be dope to get that, like, prequel movie series or whatever That'd of a young so Isaiah Bradley. Cool. But we find out his truth. Well, I guess we hear his origin story, that him and a group of other black soldiers got shot up with a bunch of different versions of the serum and got told it was tetanus. Again, yeah. drawing from real-life events. We did this, guys. Sorry, but our government did that to black people. We just shot them up with diseases and then told them like it was a placebo or told them that it was medicine and then just watched them die just to see what would happen because they're black they don't matter like 
I can't believe our country. I can't believe our history, man. This is ridiculous. Yeah, we America is not the greatest country. No, and I love that Marvel's addressing it. This is so yeah. good. Oh, speaking of that, we just found out that the guy who killed George Floyd is actually finally going to prison. He got like charged for it. About damn. Time. I know, right? Just a, just a random thought yeah. right there, but like you know. But it's about time, uh, though. And then. Some of the unstable super soldiers, while they were out on a mission one day, got captured. So what does Isaiah Bradley do? The same thing Captain America would do for the Howling Commandos. Yeah. He leaves his compound, he goes, saves them, brings them back, and what happens to him when he gets home? They, they shoot him and keep him as the remaining... Well, I don't think they shoot him. No, they don't shoot Isaiah, but they shoot his boys. No, I don't or think that's what that him. meant. When he said they died, I think they died because they were unstable. He said he was the only one to survive the super soldier serum. Oh, so they yeah, died because, yeah. like, it killed them. That's why they put but, him in jail. We're like, yo, why does it work on you? Yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I don't know. The first time watching it, I pictured he rescued him just for them to get shot no killed. no he rescued him it's supposed to be like a parallel like oh okay so we can yeah. let white steve rogers do this but because isaiah's black we can't let him do that like he he's rescuing american soldiers because technically <laughs> he wore the captain america shield and uniform so in the comics so that's why that's yeah. the technicality they're getting him on oh he stole the government property and left to go say you know what i mean so that's how they they got him on a technicality but like come on like, he didn't do that they, to Steve. they just literally brought more of his boys, more of the. And they were super US soldiers. Army. Yeah, what? Right. But, you know, the craziest part, the only reason he had to go save them was because they were going to die because once the super soldiers got captured, the U.S. government was just going to blow up the whole prisoner of war camp to say, hide yeah, the that's, evidence. Like, that's just. No. That's just. Um, pretty accurate, I feel uh, like. Um, America, why why you fucked up? I, I feel like that would be something we would do, though. Like, come on. Yeah, no. And, and we're saying we as in our country, not us Yes, personally. not us personally. I wouldn't do that. That's, like you said, I want to see the adventures he went on. This seems like this should yeah. be a limited series. Or even a straight-up movie, honestly. Right. Yeah, but see, I like the idea of it being I, a no, show because like we get more context. That, yeah, we do get more context if we're if it's in a show. It's longer, like you get, can get like six hours. Dude. Yeah, like with what we're getting with Falcon and Winter Soldier and Wandavision, and because they were oh like, yeah, they were shorter episodes, three, but there were, were two more. Minutes, yeah, so it it basically works out to be the same. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just stretching my back. And, and not only that, um. Like, if they do, uh, if they do a show or movie with Isaiah Bradley, the, it'll definitely there will definitely be a part where it fast forwards in time or whatever. Possibly. Give us the old Isaiah, and then something will happen to his uh, grandson. Yes, you? grandson. Grand, uh, grandson, and then he'll become patriot. patriot. But if anything, that would be the one show I could see having multiple seasons because you could look at the different adventures he goes on like maybe yeah. maybe one mission per season like kind of what we're seeing with the flag smashers yeah. now it, this has only been basically one mission yeah one whole mission but, right yeah and then um yeah so isaiah gets done probably the dirtiest any marvel's been done yeah they and raised him from history hit him basically made him like he was dead yeah, he even told Sam like, "What, uh, like I'm supposed to be dead? Why do you think I haven't like been out there?" Right, like, don't tell anyone about me. They will kill me. Just leave me the way I am. Let me live out my days. Because I'm, I guarantee you, Isaiah Bradley could still kick some ass. For sure, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like I would want to tell someone too, because even if he dies. Like, isn't he kind of scared that someone could find him any day in that old house he's at? Yeah. Or does I, he think that no one's it. looking for him because he's dead? I. Also, if he's supposed to be dead, how the hell did Bucky know where to find him? 
Now that we know that he's supposed to be dead. Think about it though. Bucky, I don't know how I don't know how Bucky knew where to find him. But oh wait, duh, never mind. I was about to say uh, Wait. Bu- uh, Bucky did fight Elijah mm-hmm. as the Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. but this was before that whole shit went down. With exactly, him, uh... what if it wasn't? What I... if it wasn't? I just That's... thought, what if when they captured him and put him in prison and were doing experiments, and then Bucky resurfaced again as the Winter Soldier, and that's when he goes, "Oh, they dropped me behind the line to take care of him." And then that's when they pulled him off out from the dead. That's why nobody knew about the mission because he they were keeping oh, him. You know what I mean? So maybe yeah, that's, that's why Bucky knows. That yeah, that's pretty good actually. I mean, it's not we 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 don't know for sure, but that's the best I can think of right now. Yeah, like how else would Bucky know Elijah? You know? Right, right. But um, yeah. Then like you said, no self-respecting black man would want to be Cap, says Isaiah. So, yeah, but you know you're looking at a self-respecting mm. black man. Across Sam took that as a challenge. Yeah, he really 100%. did. Hundred percent. Because he like in the MCU, he definitely is a self-respecting black man. Right. Like he's not how. He's not what you typically see mm-hmm. in a black mm-hmm. man. Not to sound racist or stereotypical. But you're right. He's a Cajun. He's different. <laughs> And then now we finally get what I've been waiting for. Some montages of them fixing the boat. Yeah. Bucky they... delivers the lunchbox. Bucky flirting with Sarah. Oh, my God. You know what? I was thinking about that first interaction where he's like, hey, I'm Bucky. Sarah. Oh, hi, Sarah. Steve's mom was also named Sarah. So maybe Your that's. Name was Sarah, yeah. So maybe yeah. that's where he was like, he was like, oh, Sarah. Maybe. Also, I do think he was flirting with her. He was definitely flirting, like for like, sure. Uh, Sam, because uh, Bucky was gonna go back to his place or something, and like, oh, you could crash at my sister's house, just no flirting with her. Well, because Sam's like, you're really gonna do me like that. You're gonna set me up like that. Of course, you can stay here, dude. Yeah. As long as you help me with the boat, no. <laughs> and then also, Sam uh, calls in some favors. Yeah, he does da- some. Some the whole neighborhood was out here. The whole neighborhood, like, which I don't. Again, which that surprised me because if you can just on a dime call up the neighbors and oh hi, Mister. Why Falcon, couldn't he have done that like, like a week ago on the show? First of all, why couldn't Sarah have done that years ago and got stuff up and running? Yeah. Is it just because he's Falcon he gets special treatment? Like, she couldn't have been like, yeah, you know my brother's the Falcon, right? You can't help me. Or maybe... Or her dad was a preacher. Well, like, I don't know. I'm sure they... Gr- I'm pretty sure they grew up in that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So, the neighbor... Because there were a bunch of, like, old elderly yeah, people. Yeah, that knew who like, their parents. Yeah, and then they knew them. Like, I'm sure... When they were like, kids. Like, that whole neighbor was, like, how we were in our old neighborhood. Yep. Uh, where everybody knew each yeah, other. Everyone yeah, everyone knew each other. Yeah. And it was a small community, and they just stayed there their whole lives, pretty much. Yeah, so, like... like, So yeah, how do you not the get Falcon, help? The Falcon... Him being the Falcon definitely, like, you know, helped a lot with that. Mm-hmm. But, like, just growing up, like, you know, like, I'm sure Sam did, like, helped out everyone in that neighborhood a lot. Right, and his dad clearly did. Yeah. So... So I don't, like, I don't know. Sarah, like, why are you slacking on them favors, though? M- maybe she is just, like, too self-respecting to be, like, maybe she didn't want to call in favors. She's like, I'm going to do this on my own or I'm going to die trying. She definitely seems like that person like that, that would be like, yeah, yeah no, I want to do this myself. Yeah. Like, like you, you need help. Just admit it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of like the women in our family. <laughs> <laughs> And then Bucky officially stays to help Sam fix the boat because he's trying to, Yeah. Uh, and then a line that I really liked, uh, or an interaction that I really liked between Bucky and Sam uh, when they were, like, fixing a, like, leak in the gas pipe or whatever, or just a pipe in general. It, Sam's like, why didn't you use the arm? I mean, I don't, I yeah, don't that's think, what I'm I talking think about. of it at first. Uh, and I, I'm and right-handed. Yeah, and I don't I'm right-handed. always think of it. Which, um... That kind of pissed me off, too, because I saw it, Sam struggling with the wrench, and I was like, Bucky's just about to go, tink. 
And then he grabbed the wrench and yeah. showed him how to use it the right way. And I kind of loved him even more because I was like, you know what? That's a man right there. I mean, a man injected with super soldier serum, but that's no, still a I'm man. not saying no, because I he know. was strong enough to do it. But no. he had like technique. He was like, you got to go up with it. Like oh, yeah, he knew no. how to fix it. How do you randomly know how to do- like? That's a man. I don't know like, how to do that. I mean, he definitely he definitely learned some shit while he was serving the right. army. <laughs> right. So that was just that was cool to me. And then we see Crapped in America. John <laughs> John <laughs> Walker <laughs> go to visit Lamar's parents. Yeah, I I just hate it. I hate you know how I just told you about an interaction that I did like. I did not like this interaction whatsoever. Honestly, I felt sad because like I didn't want Lamar to die. I, I, I liked Lamar. Yeah, Lamar was definitely his angel side to his already devilish side. Right. He was the only thing keeping John in check. But the one thing that I did not like, you know, they're talking or whatever, and then his mom was like, uh, that that man that killed the, uh, that man that killed our Nico. son. Yeah. Uh, did you at least give him, uh, was that the man that killed him or whatever? Or did you give that man justice? Yep. Yep, that he didn't even kill your son. That's why it was a guilt trip. That's why you can tell that he's gonna come after Carly because like that was so obviously set up, and I cringed watching it because I knew it was like, oh, I'm just, I just have satisfaction in knowing that the man that killed my boy got his justice. And yeah. It, like like the whole time you're like, no, no, no he didn't. He didn't. I mean, he was holding John back, so personally, I don't know how you feel about it. I do personally blame the whole group for Lamar's death, even though Carly was the one that punched him. Because what were they trying to do? They were going to kill Captain America. Someone was going to die, and they were all planning it. So they're yeah. not innocent. Yeah, you could blame the Flag Smashers, but I, uh, you could also sit there and blame John as well because... And he does blame himself. Yes, he does, indeed. But that whole thing probably wouldn't have happened if John wasn't anxious to barge in on Sam and Carly's conversation right, in the right. earlier episode. Well, that's not why he says I shouldn't have went in. He says I shouldn't have went in because of when they... I think, I think anyway, he says he shouldn't have went in when they went the second time when Carly called after Carly called Sam's sister and got Sam and Bucky away and then John and him went to that building. I think that's what he was talking about. I shouldn't have went in there. Lamar said Yeah, not they to definitely go could because I remember in that last episode when uh when Sharon says, Yeah, John's like entering the block right now or whatever like they like start to dip or, or try to dip. Right, exactly. Like, so I think preventing. that's what yeah. they're talking about. That definitely could be what they're talking about. But either way, John's going after Carly. Yeah, and not only that. Because his parents just guilt tripped the hell out of him. That conversation from the earlier episode, if John didn't barge in and actually waited, like maybe Carly would have rethought things. Honestly, Sam was close to having her. I don't think it would have been as easy as like, oh, if you would have given Sam five, ten more minutes, everything would have been fine. Oh, yeah, no, it definitely wouldn't have been as but, easy as that. Yeah, but. yeah, Sam was breaking, making strides. Yeah, really. But anyway, so he lies to Lamar's parents. He leaves. Also, was that girl Lamar's sister or his wife? Who was that girl in their house? She honestly looked old enough to, maybe maybe an older sister. I don't know, cause when John was leaving and he was like, "If you need anything, I'm here," and I it looked like he was looking at her. So like that makes me think it was his wife, like a widow now. I mean, it could be your wife. His I, wife. She didn't say anything, and nobody addressed it, so I don't know. Yeah. But I want to know because it's like, is she a character? She's a scroll. She's definitely a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But then we see Sharon, yep. this bonkers lady. She calls Batrock the Leaper. Yeah. And they have a strange conversation. She basically says that she's the reason that he's out of the Algerian prison. Yeah. So she broke him out of prison after Sam captured him the first. No, no, no. She broke him out of prison after um. Winter Captain Soldier. America, Winter Soldier, yes. Yeah. Because he he escaped Sam in the first episode. So, yes, 
She's the reason that he was in the first episode. Based on their conversation, she set him up to go capture that government official guy, I guess? Yeah, something like that. And she's going to pay him double this time to incentivize him because he's not into it? Yeah, he definitely wasn't into it at all. But, like, so I I think it's very clear that she's behind Batroc in episode one, but that just makes me even more confused. Yeah. Like, what what does that mean that she's planning? Like, Sharon, what do you got planned? Really? Like, what is... I don't... It's... Like, like I understand your uh, life of crime in... Uh, Madripoor. Madripoor, but... Um, but what do you got cooking? We're going to see in episode six, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. No, we definitely will. But it's just weird because I thought we were going to get some more closure on her, and now it just it just threw me off even more. Like, like that that's making me question your early your question from an earlier episode. Did uh, was Steve not tr- trying to contact her, or was she just ignoring him? I don't know. I keep seeing so many things now. Now I think that she is taking one out of Valentina's book and she's like a double agent. I think she's kind of working with the power broker just so she can be in Madripoor, but secretly she's probably working with Nick Fury up in the space station or something. Yeah. Like, she, especially, why did she have Batroc go to the Flag Smashers and give them weapons? Yeah. Isn't she working for the power broker? And didn't they steal from the power broker? They out the flag smashers did steal from the power broker, and it's not confirmed she's working for the power and, broker. Yeah, no. So that's where my confusion falls apart because it's like you stop assuming. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I want to know about Sharon. She's she's a strange cookie. And then we get what the manliest catch ever. I'm I'm pretty sure that's the manliest game of frisbee catch we ever get to see. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, like if you don't catch that, like something's being decapitated. Oh gosh, like something being cho- something is being chopped off. They're just casually playing catch with the shield, and um, I'm really mad that this scene is just now happening because we found out Bucky was in therapy. And we know that Sam is a grief counselor. Why has he not talked to Bucky before now? I don't know. Like, if he's talking down Carly, why couldn't he have maybe helped Bucky sooner? What the hell? But anyway, anyway, they talk. Bucky finally confirms that him and Cap did talk before Cap went back in time in Endgame. Yeah. Because he says, when Steve told me, he he goes, I don't think either of us knew what it meant for the black man for a black man to have the shield. Confirming that he talked, so it makes me wonder what else they talked about exactly. Yeah. And they, how much Bucky knows. Bucky is definitely you know Like what I, if we all knew that they talked. It's just nice to see it confirmed. Yeah. Like uh, you know, that conversation, that was an off-camera conversation. Right. So what if off-camera, maybe, maybe old man Steve is still around and Bucky, you know, visits him. Steve is still around, dude. You don't think Steve's around? I, I, I definitely think he is. They haven't but said dead one time in the show. They, they keep haven't. saying gone. Yeah, no, they, they definitely have not said dead once. But, you know, just, you know. Chris Evans, please. I, I personally want to believe that he's on the moon with Joaquin Torres. What he said, <laughs> I be, think he should be on the moon base. More realistically, hilarious. he's probably just in the same space station as Nick Fury. I Yeah. Why I, wouldn't he be retired up there? Yeah. Uh, like, obviously, he returns in Endgame. Old, but you know, but he in returns. This timeline, yeah, he returns. That's in, how you know they're timeline, not done with him. Peggy's dead, mm-hmm. so he doesn't have that going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in that alternate timeline, we don't know if he has kids with her. I really want to see Ian Rogers come out of this because he has a son. His son becomes Nomad. I think he becomes Cap. I'm not really sure. I don't know much about that, but I want to see his son. 
But with the multiverse stuff happening, we could. We could definitely see. But, dude, you know Cap is alive, and you know that he's not done in the MCU, because if he was done, why wouldn't they have left him in the past with Peggy? Why'd he come back as an old man? Yeah. Like, and, they and could have had a thing Isaiah where he Bradley's left the shield alive to Falcon. Because they're about the same age, realistically, in the MCU, of mm, course. No, I think Cap's still a little older. I mean, he might be a little older, but like they were both fighting in World War Two. No, they weren't. Not during the same... No, I mean, Isaiah Bradley was in a different war. I'm pretty sure it was the Vietnam War. He wasn't in the same war as Cap. It was the war after that. It was years later. Like, they're not... The Cap is older, for sure. Hmm. I mean... Is it confirmed that he I, said Vietnam War? Yes. I, I don't know if it's Vietnam, but it's definitely not World War Two. In the comics, Isaiah Bradley didn't even fight alongside Cap in World War Two. He well, fought I, in the war after. Well, I didn't say... Like, I wasn't saying they fought alongside No, I know, but it's yeah. not the same war. 100%. Okay, in my the, bad then. In the MCU, though... um. I don't, I don't know all the wars of the history, but I do no, think that they made know. Isaiah Bradley more current than he is in the comics. I think in the comics he fought in the Vietnam War or something, or maybe it's the Korean War, the 70s. It might be the Korean War. And then maybe in the MCU I think they have him fighting in the Vietnam War, so he's a little younger in the MCU. But either way, in both cases, Cap is older. Gotcha. All right. But... <laughs> I don't remember what we were talking about, so I'm just going to go back were, before that tangent happens. We were talking about... Um, Bucky and Sam were yeah, talking. Yeah, Bucky, t- Bucky, basically, what's happening behind the camera. Like yeah, off yeah. Camera, yeah. And Bucky apologizes because he says, you know, I'm sorry. He basically says he didn't understand the politics of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Now he does. He realizes why Falcon said no at first. Yeah. You know, so I get that. I liked that. They finally got to reconcile now. Sam, you know, gave Bucky some sort of closure. You got to stop. You're not solving any of your problems. You're just avenging your problems. You need to actually go make yourself of service to the people that you've wronged and make them feel better, which is obviously a setup. He's going to confess to nakajima's son's death yeah i guarantee you that's where bucky's headed in the last episode i honestly feel like that's how episode six is gonna start like we just see bucky roll up to nakajima and we see him not want to go in and then like he's gonna go in and then he keeps fighting along with it and then maybe nakajima just walks out and he has to or something like that he just has to say it because he's right there you know i don't know but it's gonna i think it's gonna start like that which that's gonna be that's definitely gonna be deep though, deep. Do you think Nakajima is gonna be mad at him, or do you think he's gonna forgive him? Definitely some anger, but maybe uh, forgiveness will come later. Well, right, like, like maybe angry, maybe angry at him because he killed his son and it took him so long to tell him, but forgiveness because he did tell him right but what i mean is like do you think it's gonna take a while like i feel like he's gonna be angry for five minutes like obviously he's gonna be hurt but ultimately he's just gonna be cool with it and be like all right well i know you're a good dude and i know that that was a mistake or something you know yeah because like at the end of the day it wasn't bucky right it was the winter Soldier. but will nakajima understand that i think he probably will he's like an understanding old man he, he he's he's yeah. he's old. He's wise. <laughs> <laughs> he nice. missed Miyagi. He's Asian. He's gotta be wise. And then, finally, finally, Marvel, we get the training footage of Sam with the shield. Yeah. What we thought was gonna be episode one. Something like that. At least that's what trailers are advertising it to be. I mean, after episode one, I think me and you definitely came to the conclusion. All right, it's gonna be a battle for the shield this season and he's gonna end up with it by the end and we were spot on right but like i would have liked to see this happen from the very beginning but whatever 
Um, Sam accepts that he's, you know, going to be Cap. He trains with the shield. He gets really good with the shield. He does some flips that I didn't know Falcon could do, if I'm honest. He, yeah, no. I, that just came out of, like... I mean, I'm with it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, no. Like, I'm with it, but... But I was uh, like, whoa, okay, Sam, I like it. Just flipping on us? Which, I find it funny, too, when he was doing them, like, f- uh, practice flips, touching the shield. Mm-hmm. It kind of reminded me of, like, Iron Man, uh, from, like, Iron Man 2. Oh, when like, had, testing his armor. Yeah, testing his yeah. armor. Yeah. Like, his, like, armor that he could, like, call to him. Oh, yeah, where it, like, knocked him on his ass. Yep. Yeah, and then he, like, did, like, a, like a, literally a side flip. <laughs> yeah. To, like, put the fa- helmet on. Yeah. Tink. And then the, sh- the scene ended with Sam, oh, I love it, with Sam's nephew, who just, like, traces the star on the shield. And I almost got goosebumps, because that's symboli- symbolism. I cannot speak today. Wow. That's symbolism at its best. Yeah. I mean, that's literally the other side of Isaiah saying no self-respecting black man would want to be Cap. This is Falcon saying, I'm a self-respecting black man, and I want to be Cap, and this is exactly why, because I'm going to inspire all of these younger generations of kids to do whatever they want. And I'm going to make change in the black community by being the first black. Ca- you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, he's doing it for his nephews. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Like, because obviously we see that Sam does have a family. And he's not He's not just fighting for his family. But right. But at the is. end of the day, he is. Right. But that was just, oh, I loved it. I loved it. He just, and he smiled at him. And you just saw the inspiration, and that's like that's the scene right there of the whole show. Like that's why he wants to be Cap. He finally realized it. Like, oh yes. Well, I don't have <sighs> kids of my own, but I got nephews. Right. to like smack you I, wasn't calling the police. I know but i was waving my arm trying to get your attention and you weren't no, fucking so i had to fucking reach over and smack you like okay we're still recording see oh. um book was supposed to be up stairs 40 minutes ago who gives a fuck come on capture device come back please the camera turned off Lucas, camera on. Come on, guy. What are you there for? Camera on. Come on. Push down. Push OK. Thank you. All right. Come on. Why you look so happy the way it stopped? (laughs) (laughs) Good thing all that saved. I mean, it's still recording right now. Technically, if it would fucking load. Camera, come on. Like, activate the fuck. Thank you. All right, Zach. Wow, Luke, the whole fucking camera is fucked up. God damn. That was supposed to be calling the court. 
they call it that in Mexico. I'll fucking mess you up. No, you won't. All right. Is is this still going? Okay, this isn't still going, but that's okay. We can just start that up again. All right, there we go. <laughs> hey, you now, what were we talking about again? I kind of forget you where we were. You were talking about the patriotism that is inspired right, from whatever. Sam so, and yeah. Like, we see the best shot of the show, in my opinion, him tracing the shield. Yep. And then it immediately cuts from that to the, him training, the yeah. flag smashers oh, no, no. Yeah. in the park. Yep. No, he trained before. Yeah. You diphthong. Can you think before you speak, Lucas? No. So, But um, yeah, they're in the New York park, right? Yeah, I don't know where they are, but they're in the, a park, and they're outside of, clearly they're outside of the meeting for the Patch Act to be in, you know, whether they're going to pass it or not. So they're... Obviously, what Carly was talking about was they're gonna interrupt that meeting. Yeah, that's what sees. That's what episode six is going to be about. I feel like that's the whole, you know, conflict for episode six. They're gonna try to infiltrate the meeting, and then we see that Sam is watching the meeting on the TV. Yeah, and he makes the connection. Oh, we don't know where Carly is. This meeting's happening. Now we know where Carly is. Which, which of course, you know. Everything leads back to New York. Right. We see Batrock come in with weapons from Sharon. And um, the one Flag Smasher is mad that they're working with Batrock. But then she goes, well, they think we're criminals anyway, so might as well be. But she also says that Batrock is their killer. And he wants to get revenge on Falcon. But why do they need him? Why couldn't they just kill Falcon? I don't know. I, I don't. Really I think. Don't. I think it's because Carly doesn't want to kill Falcon. I think, like, how he was making a breakthrough earlier with her. I think that she. I think it it worked, not to its full extent, yeah, obviously, no. but she sees like, okay, he doesn't need to die. He is a good person. He's not on my side. I don't like him, but he doesn't deserve to die. I don't think she wants to even kill him. I don't think she would do that. So she hired Batchok. To, like, maybe kill him, but also use his help. Yes, exactly. And then... We get the cliffhanger. He opens the Wakandan lunchbox. And, oh no, whatever could be inside. Uh, at first I was asking, like, yo, like, you're not going to show us what's in the box, bro? Right. <laughs> but... I it's... thought it was going to end. Like, we see him open it, and then, boom, it switches, and we see what he sees. Yeah. That's how I thought it was going to end. That would have been dope, but, you know. Maybe we see his costume, and then next it, episode, it I starts with him in the costume. It, I definitely feel like it is a new Falcon outfit, because his wings did get destroyed from the previous events well clearly yeah. like i don't every i heard a bunch of people on youtube and stuff they were saying like oh god whatever could be in the box and it's like are you stupid like it's so obviously vibranium wings vibranium wings he to even, go along he, with the vibranium shield he right? even has them in the comics like it's going to be his new i don't know what it's going to look like no i we, assume red white and blue like cap because we definitely did see white well, yeah, it's going to have white in it. It's probably going to be mostly white with a little bit of red and blue. But it's like, it's a suit, guys. What what else would be in there from Wakanda other than dope-ass wings? No idea, man. But anyway, like, I don't know. We get the first, first end credit yeah. scene for this show. And um, it, it's a very interesting one because uh, John Walker. This man, John Walker, he, he, is Tony Starking his own Iron Man. I mean, Captain America shield. Yeah, he really is. And he. No! No. That's all I have to say. Like, he better not be going around calling himself Captain America. 
Uh, Iron Man but, America. <laughs> but you know, he uh, he melts, um, he melts a metal, his like metal. Uh, metal I believe he put that on the shield. Um, I don't like, know if he melted it down to make the shield or whether he put it on, but I guess we'll see. Like, it is in the start shape, so I could definitely see him using that as the the centerpiece. Right. I feel like that's, yeah. Um, But we see him, you know, welding and whatnot with the, and then we get a shot of not a, Ooh, a no. not yet fully completed shield. Right. But and I it's mean, red, white. And blue. Even from the mid trailer or the mid season trailer, we know he's going to be donning a new shield. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be that DIY one though, because that's not made out of vibranium. That's clearly no, like steel not or something. At all. Like so, that shield is not gonna do like, well. I'm pretty sure Carly is just gonna fold that like a pancake if she gets her hands on it. So Honestly, what I think is going to happen is Valentina is going to give him a shield. I wouldn't be surprised. But I don't know where she'd get it from, but this bitch is mysterious. Who knows? I mean, she is supposedly a shield agent in the comics and then that Leviathan group that you mentioned earlier. Right, right. So she has her ways. She definitely has her ways. But I, I this is obviously setting up John Walker to become U.S. agent. And I have a little bit of a working theory on what I think might happen, not just after the—I mean, after the show as well. Like, okay, what I think is he's probably not going to be introduced as anything next episode. Like, he's just going to be John Walker, want to be Captain America, you know. He might have a different costume. He might not because he might just be in his Cap costume still trying to be Cap. But he's definitely going to show up again with that shield, going to try to thwart their plans, whatever. They're going to obviously beat him. And then I think that he'll get taken down and he'll probably join them in the raft or join Zemo in the raft. And then assuming they go the Thunderbolts route, he'll probably join Zemo on the Thunderbolts because he'll, you know, be like the cap of that team. And then... What I think he's going to do after he's out as the Thunderbolts, maybe, is he could, they could play into the storyline where he fakes bad guy attacks and then he, like, stops them to make himself look good. And there's also a storyline where he tries to make Falcon look bad, possibly by also faking more attacks. And because, obviously, he's like, yo, you took my shield. So maybe that's where they're going with this. He's going to try to make Falcon look bad and try to take over the mantle again and become Cap. Maybe if he takes over the mantle as U.S. agent, like, at the end of this, he'll be put in the raft, and then whenever Thunderbolts come out, he'll make his debut as U.S. agent. Maybe because how John Walker, everybody knows that he was capped. They know his secret identity. Maybe U.S. agent will actually keep it a secret so people won't know it's John because if they know, they'll be like, no, he got kicked out of being capped. Why would we let him be that again? Yeah, exactly. So maybe he'll keep his identity a secret, and then somebody will out him like they did with Spider-Man, and that's also a storyline. That's kind of what happens in the comics, is he becomes Cap, and then he gets outed as being John Walker, and then someone, because they know he's John Walker now, they find him and kill, they kill his parents, and that's what sends him over the deep end, and he just kills uh, left and right wing, and like that's what sends him to be U.S. agent. Clearly, they've adapted his parents to be Lamar in this story. So Lamar dies, and that's what sends him over the edge. Yeah. But maybe they're setting up later. He, you know, uses U.S. agent, and nobody knows his identity. And then his identity comes out, and someone out. Maybe his parents actually die this time. Maybe. But um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's not the end of Johnny Boy. It's not. It's definitely not the end of John, and it's definitely not the end of Zemo, so I don't have, like, a full-on theory, and I, like, because I definitely don't know where this next episode will go, but I do know that a big fight is going to go down. Clearly. Bigger than the fight in episode five. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I don't know, we could maybe see... 
I don't know. Maybe the power broker gets revealed. Maybe the power broker doesn't get revealed. I don't know. I'm hoping Contessa is the power broker. Also, clearly, you don't know. Nobody knows. That's well, why we uh, need to kind of talk and try to give them what we think. Well, I'm saying I don't know because I don't know. No, I know. I but I'm like, theory. I ask you questions all the time, and you're just like, you know, I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, clearly the whole point of us talking is to try and get other information out. Like, it's like improv, man. You don't end the conversation to say yes and. You keep trying to keep it going. Also, I'm sorry, my chair's hitting the mic. <laughs> but, but, um... What I do know... It, I don't know this necessarily. A form of the Thunderbolts will definitely be introduced. Maybe not... Not it, in it this next episode, but in the MCU later down the line. I'm hoping so. The Thunderbolts, I would hope so. I don't know if Red Hulk's going to be in it because, like, Thunderbolt Ross is kind of old, and I don't know that they'd make him into a new character. But also, Hulk is, like, 95% CGI. Yeah. So they could probably just, like, get some good models of his face and some dialogue and then just cgi it from there like maybe he doesn't i don't know does red hulk go back and forth or is he just always in red hulk mode i don't know i don't know either so maybe he's always in red hulk mode you know and then that's how they can just keep him as thunderbolt ross because i'm also pretty sure that red hulk is more intelligible than hulk intelligent yeah he's also more uh like angry i believe like Thunderbolt Ross. But, um, do you know what else Wyatt Russell is in? No. Because, like, honestly, kind of didn't know who this man was until this series. That's, that's the most interesting thing, though. And he's doing, like, really good as John Walker. Like, I don't like him, but also, yeah. like, that's the point. You don't, yeah, no, he's a character you're not supposed to like, so... I think he's kicking ass in this performance. No, definitely. Like, like, just just that scream uh, uh, that he makes from <laughs> his arm getting broke. I mean, even the little like, uh, that's like little head little... bobbles, and his signature. You know, like every time Bucky hits him or something, and he's just down, and then he just raises his head up. Yeah, looking mean as fuck. It must be so easy for you to have all that serum coursing through your veins. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I like Sound, it. I think he's doing amazing. really good. Yeah. And then the only other random thought I have, honestly, that I should have said earlier, but you kind of said it, and now I want it to be true. Like, I kind of want to see Bucky and Sarah get together, maybe. I think that'd be funny. That, that definitely would be funny. Like, it kind of seems like Sarah's a single mother. So, Papa I mean, White Wolf. You know it, dude. I'm just, I don't know. That's probably not going to happen. It was meant to be played as that flirting joke. But, I, I mean, it was I, funny. I, There's something although there. Although you say that, the, like, quote-unquote conversation seems more genuine than with the girl from episode one two yeah with you're the, right you're right yeah that i mean well yori kind of forced him on that date he didn't want to yeah do that. yeah he didn't want to but he went on it still speaking of yori though okay so the shang chi teaser trailer dropped earlier this week yes and i watched it Cause, it, lo it looks duh. amazing. It looks amazing. Do you think that maybe, because I didn't want to acknowledge this honestly, but it could possibly be true. Um, New rock stars, Eric Voss, is saying that he believes the Mandarin could be the power broker. And again, I didn't really want to entertain that idea at first, but like, what if he is? With Shang-Chi dropping now as Falcon and Winter Soldier's wrapping up, I mean, this could, I could sound really racist right now, but like they're Asian, Yori's Asian, you know, maybe that's the tie over into it. But when Bucky confesses something to Yori that might 
piss him off or might start up some chain of command where, like, I don't know, it gets back to... I don't know. Maybe he's connected to the Mandarin somehow, possibly. But it seems interesting. It and definitely does. The, the longer it goes on, it seems like he... Like, the Mandarin could possibly could possibly be the power broker. But I still don't want to entertain the idea but fully because I don't see But now you say that, it. I want to... I kind of want to, like, uh, re-watch that scene where, like, he goes to uh, Yuri's house. Bucky goes to Yuri's house, and his intent was to tell him tell him about his right. son. Uh, and we see, like, a little shrine for his son. Mm-hmm. But I want to rewatch that scene to see if there's anything around that. Right. To see if, like, there's any details that... We might have missed. Maybe or, there's like a Ten Rings logo in there or something. Or maybe like a small portion of Cause it. Because if you think about it, what was that mission even? What was Bucky doing? We don't even know. Yeah, like he was def- like he was taking out a group of people. Yeah, sure, but like we for think what? we think Yori's son was an innocent bystander, but we don't know why he was in that building. No, we do not. Nothing in Marvel's coincidental. What if this all comes back around and Yori's son was in the Ten Rings? And, like, maybe this unleashes something for Bucky. That'd be crazy, yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, that's the only the off-the-wall... That's the biggest off-the-wall thing I could think of. I mean, although it is a little racist, uh, I, I could see it with the whole Yuri and his son being I mean, connected to the Ten Rings. Clearly, he's going to see Yuri episode six, and what other connection would we get to the Mandarin besides that? Unless he's just the power broker because he's just an ancient being. He's the power broker. Also, one quick thing. In the trailer, we see the Ten Rings are arm rings. In the comics, they're actually ring for your finger rings. Like one on, there's ten of them because there's one on each finger. But as we saw in the trailer, they're actually big arm rings. And they like have magic, and they float, and they space out on your on your forearms. And again, I don't know much about Shang Chi. I've never seen any of the comics. I literally only know about him because of this trailer. But I was watching a video on YouTube. I believe Eric Voss again, new rock stars, love that channel. But um, he was talking about in the comics how the Mandarin stole the rings originally from a dragon. And maybe that's why they're so big to fit on our puny arms because we're small, but maybe they were rings for the dragon. Like, maybe they were actual that's finger rings. That's interesting because uh, I mentioned Iron Man earlier. Um, there was actually a, like, billboard or a poster, like, a billboard in, like, the background, uh, for, and it had the name, like, Fin Fang Zoom or whatever. That's a dragon in mm. the Marvel comics. Is it? Okay, I didn't know that. So possibly. Yeah. So that not, could not, be not the dragon. That. I'm not sure. Yeah, it, that would be that'd be dope. And then it all connects. Obviously, it doesn't connect to Iron Man cuz Iron Man is now dead. Right. But but it if, does if because they, the Mandarin, you know, the Ten Rings yeah, was the, the original Mandar- the man yeah, people the ten- that kidnapped him. So it does yeah. connect. It, it, it does connect, but the whole Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but the whole Finn thing, Zoom thing, like, yes, his name was first seen in an Iron Man film. So, there's that. Um, but the whole Ten Rings thing, you know, I, I find it interesting how it it's kind of come full circle. The launching MCU movie to the latest MCU movie. Right, but I don't know. It really hasn't come full circle it, unless, like, like, they had the Mandarin be the event that Thanos was. Then it would be full circle because he started it, he ended it. Yeah. But and there and in, this isn't guaranteed, but there might be a reference to Tony's kidnapping because you know the Ten Rings. That group Possibly, is the Ten I don't Rings. Know. I don't know. But, yeah, I like that idea of them being rings for the dragon's fingers because that would explain why they're so big on us. Yeah. But if we're being honest, the reason they're so big on us in the movie 
is because they already did the Infinity Gauntlet, and that's on your hand, so why would they do more hand jewelry with, yeah. with colorful rings and stuff that would resemble the stones when they could do these rings? And now that dragon theory sounds even better. Like, yeah, they were really rings does. for him, you know? Honestly, I... And each one of them has a different power. I don't know exactly don't... what they were, but there's, like, a fire one, a frost one... At one point, you see him like bend water in the trailer. Like I don't know, it looks awesome. Like is this is this Avatar, <laughs> the Last Airbender, the movie that we actually wanted? No, this is actually copying like Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee movies. Is what no. this um Marvel actually came out with Shang Chi during that time when those movies were popular. That was their answer. Like oh yeah, we're gonna make karate fighting too. Oh um, speaking of that, this is kind of off topic. Uh, the character, uh, we're talking about a different franchise now. Right. Uh, in the Mortal Kombat movie, mm -hmm. uh, or IGN uploaded a video on their channel, how much does Liu Kang know about Liu Kang? Like, the actor that plays him. Mm -hmm. you know, he was like, yeah, Liu Kang was based off Bruce Lee movies. Right. Yeah. You know, since we mentioned Bruce Lee. Right. So, it all connects from Bruce Lee. <laughs> it all connects. But, Yeah. So but, now I'm really excited for that Shang Chi movie. But I, the one thing I do hate, we gotta wait till September. Oh uh, yeah, but I'm actually surprised because I thought it would have been longer to wait. Yeah, like I'm low key happy that it's only September. Right, like 2022 type shit. I need to look at the Marvel slate and see what's coming out now as well. Yeah, like I have that whole thing that I'm pretty sure I shared with you. I'm just gonna go look again because yeah. they just keep changing it, and you never know. They all just these damn delays, bro. I know. But you know what won't be delayed? Episode six of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, it's Friday. Get that on top. We're gonna get that on we're gonna get, not only the episode's gonna be out, but we're gonna it's actually gonna upload be on based on time. That. It's going to be better production quality than we've been doing. We've been all over the place this episode. We have been all over the place. We're gonna do notes next time. You know it. No, for real. No, like, we, we need to really start are. doing better shit. Like yeah. we need to kind of commit ourselves to a better schedule and get stuff ironed out more. But yeah, so that's what you can expect next week. And I think that's it. That that is definitely it. We are the geeks that speak, and we will see you next week. <laughs>